The easiest way to understand fractions is to know that a fraction is just a number. You can sit it on the number line. But the weird thing about fractions, which makes them a bit hard to understand at first, is that one number can have a whole lot of different disguises. Now, these fractions I've drawn up here are all, are all actually the same number. They're all one half. How can you tell? Well, in this picture that I have of each of them, they're all exactly the same size. So if I was to give you half a pizza, I could give it to you just as one massive slice, okay? Now the size of the slice is the number that we write down the bottom here, because this means one divided by two, or one out of two. That means if you have one pizza and you divide it into two pieces, you get one of these. Okay, that's a big chunk of pizza in one slice. You have one slice, and this number down here tells you how many slices there are altogether. So if there's not many slices, they're going to be big. All right, here we have two quarters, which really means you've got two out of four pieces. All that means is the pizza has been cut up into some more pieces, right? There's four pieces altogether, and you're going to eat two of them. You've got the same amount of pizza as this person. It's just cut up a little bit more. Now, when you cut it into twice as many pieces, and you eat twice as many pieces, to make up for it, if you're going to eat the same amount, the pieces have to be half the size. So you can see that as this number on the bottom gets bigger, the, si the size of the piece of pizza gets smaller, doesn't it? But to make up for it, you can eat more of them. Now, in understanding why, when you turn a fraction into its equivalent fractions, why you can only multiply and divide, well, let's think what we're actually doing here with the pizza. We're dividing it up into slices, aren't we? So if we're to compare something like two quarters with four eighths, we've just divided the pizza up into more pieces, and that's evident by the big number on the bottom. We've cut it into eight instead of cutting it into four. But because we have divided it into more pieces, basically by multiplying this by two, to get from here to here, it's two times, two fours are eight. To make up for it, the fact that you're getting only half the size pieces, you have to have twice as many of them. Okay, now multiplying by two on the top says that you're going to get twice as many pieces. Multiplying by two on the bottom says the pieces are only going to be half the size. And we know, of course, that two times a half is one, so you're still getting exactly what you were. Okay, so how do we use this to actually make an equivalent fraction? These ones seem quite easy, and I could compare any two of them and have a look at what's happening. Let's compare the most basic one with, say, this one. Here we've got one half and we've got five tenths. Now, if we look at them like this, one half equals five tenths, you can see a couple of things happening. You can either say this is to this as that is to that, or you can say this is to this as that is to that. I call them comparing the side partners or comparing the top and bottom partners. Let me explain. I can compare these and verify that they are actually in proportion by saying if you take one and you double it, you'll get two. So if you take five and you double it, you will also get ten. They're in proportion, see? I can also make my arrows go back the other way. And to get from the bottom number to the top number, I could say, well, what do you have to do to two to turn it into one? You need to halve it. Divide by two. So this one. 10 divided by 2 is also 5. All right. Now this helps us because if there's something we don't know of any of these four things, if we know three of them, we can find the fourth one. Let me show you. Half equals something over 16, and I'm trying to find what goes here. Well, I can say 1 times 2, or let, let's start from the bottom ones actually. Two To get from 2 to 1, I need to halve it, divide by 2. So what do I need to do to the 16? Same thing, I need to halve it and I'll get 8. To find the answer here, I used side partners. This is to this as that is to that. And whatever I did here, I did over here. Now, it also works the other way around, that we have the top and bottom partners. And a lot of the time, those are the ones that we want to use when we um, fiddle around with fractions. So we say this is to this as that is to that. Now again, you can only multiply or divide. If you divide the pizza up into five times as many pieces, 
then to make up for it, the pieces will, you'll get five times as many of them, right? Because they're only a fifth of the size. So you can multiply by five down here, but you have to multiply by five up here, okay? So how do we use that? Well, we can take any fraction. Let's take one that's not actually equal to a half, so it's a little bit harder. And if we want to find one of the numbers, let's say we want to find that one, and we already know that this one is, say, 40, 3 eighths is equal to how many 40 -ths? It's not easy to use the side partners here because it's hard to multiply 3 by something to get 8 exactly. But I know that 8 fives are 40, so I can draw a little arrow here and say multiply this one by 5, and I have to multiply this one by 5. What are 3 fives? 15. That tells me that 3 eighths is the same as 15 40 -ths. Imagine getting 3 eighths of pizza. These are eights, it would look like that, wouldn't it? One, two, three quite big slices. Whereas someone who's getting 15 fortieths, well, they've got a pizza that's divided up into 40 pieces. That's a lot of pieces. It's tiny little slivers, right? Each one would only be so small. But to make up the fact that the pieces are so small, they're getting 15 of them. So they think they're getting a lot of slices, but they're really a lot of tiny slivers. Have the two people got the same amount of pizza? Yes, this one's just more cut up, okay? So what working should you show when you are finding equivalent fractions? Well, I think the easiest way to do it is probably just to say, if you're looking for one of the, piece, one of the numbers and you know some of the others, drawing those arrows I think is really helpful because it just keeps things in proportion. Whatever you've done to the top, you have to do to the bottom. Now, have a look for two partners that have a nice, simple relationship. The 6 and the 18, I know that 6 threes are 18. But if you're going to have three times as many pieces of pizza to make up for it, they need to be a third of the size. And to do that, you need to multiply the bottom also by three. And seven threes are 21. So six sevenths is equal to 18 twenty-ones.